Okay, so this is problem 86 from chapter 8. We have a 75, 7.5 volt um, independent source connected in series with 250 um, ohms resistor. And you have a 4 Henry inductor here. The switch is open before time zero. And you have a 25 microfarad capacitor. And we want to find the voltage drop across the capacitor after the switch closes. So, um, like always, when you have a step condition, you want to take a look at the circuit before and after the switching happens. So, before the switching happens, the circuit looks like this. We have, this is completely disconnected from that, we have a, an inductor that is a short. So, what we want to do is do a source transformation and turn this into a current source. And my math has this as 50 milliamps in parallel with 250, which is shorted out by this inductor. So you have a current that's just going in a loop like that. That's before. So we know the current before the switching happens, I, before I have T before 0, um, is 30 milliamps. Okay. So now we know what that does. Next thing we want to look at is um, what happens when the switching happens. Okay, so after the switching happens, the circuit looks like this. There no amps. 250, right? Now the inductor is no longer short. We have a parallel RLC circuit. So we know the tools that we have for figuring that out. We've got to, um, we've got to figure out what kind of response that this will give us, and then we'll know what equations to use to solve um, for a voltage function. So the first thing we have to do is figure out alpha and omega, because before we can do anything else, we have to know what type of response we're looking at. So um, for a parallel RLC circuit, alpha is 1 over 2 RC, and omega naught is 1 over U LC. So this gives me 1 over 2 times um, 250 times um, 25 micros. This one gives me 1 over root 4 times 25 micros. When you put that into your calculator, you should come out with values of um, alpha will be 80 radians per second, and omega naught will be 100. So we have a situation where alpha is less than omega naught. This tells us that we have an underdamped response. Okay, so now we know which sets of, um, which, what kind of um, equation we're looking at. So the solution will take the form of For an underdamped least parallel RLC circuit, the solution will, we're going to take a look at current because we're drawing it as a parallel RLC with an independent current source. So the solution should take the form of I L of T is equal to I final, final current plus beta 1 prime e to the minus alpha cosine omega cosine <laughs> omega d t plus beta 2 prime e to the negative alpha t sine omega d t. Okay, that's the solution that, that's the how our solution looks. Um, obviously, we're looking for voltage, but since I'm working with the inductor, I can relate the current, the inductor current, back to the voltage of the inductor, and knowing that they, the strategy is, I can relate this back to the voltage across the inductor. Um, I know that the inductor um, is connected in parallel with the capacitor, so by solving for the voltage across the inductor, I automatically solve for the voltage across the capacitor because they're parallel connected. So um, it seems like a more direct way. Um, well, it's just. I should just say, it's just one way for finding 
the, the capacity, and it's the way that I ended up doing it. So there's other ways to find the voltage across the um, capacitor as well. So what do we know? We know this, right? I find one. So remember, 30 milliamps, this is an ideal current source, right? Yeah. I final will be, in the long run, we've got, in this situation, where we've got open, right? The capacitor is an open, the inductor is a short, in this uh, DC steady state we have an ideal current source, so the I final is just going to be that same current. So we know that's going to be 30. What else do we know? We know that alpha is 80. So this is going to be E raised to the A T. This we know to be uh, omega naught is uh, 100. Hold on. Just a second. Here. 100 radians per second. Oops. I wrote alpha omega naught. Sorry, you guys. Hmm. What do? One second, you guys. Sorry, I made a typo. Uh, let me see. What are root LC? Okay, you guys, um, we need to, I, I did this in my head without writing this, and so you can see my piece of paper, it's pretty much a gobbledygook. Um, this is omega D, um, so we need to find omega D. This is omega D is omega naught minus alpha squared, and that's going to be the square root of 100 squared minus 80. Uh, a squared. And since I can't read the am writing, we'll see 100 squared minus 80 squared. Square root of that. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I did it on my calculator without putting it on here. So my omega D is, um, and then, <laughs> and then on top of that, I I was inter switching omega naught and omega D. So uh, that's why I had to pause for a little bit and figure out what, my, what I was writing there. So this is 60 T. Okay. Okay, so now, now in order to solve this, we need to find beta 1 and beta 2. And what do we know? Well, we can use the condition of I of L is equal to 0, right? We know the current at time 0. Remember, at time 0, um, we drew that current circuit at the very beginning. We know that's going to be I, that we know I L of 0 is 30 going on. We established at the very beginning of the, the problem. So here, if we put, solve this for 0, at time 0 we have 30 milliamps is equal to 30 beta 1. E to the 0 power is just 1. Cosine to the 0 is just 1. And the nice thing about solving that is that whatever doesn't matter what that is, sine of zero is zero. So this gives us a very solvable B1 is equal to 30 minus 30 is zero. So now we know that whatever our current uh, equation is, we know that B1 is zero. So this term goes away. Now we're just left with B2, beta 2, to solve for. And the way that I solve for a beta 2 is that I took this equation, because I've already used my time zero. Time zero um, condition won't help us in this case, right? Because then the, the beta two goes away and we're trying to solve for beta two. So we need to find another way to, that doesn't make the beta two go away, whereby we can find out what that value is. Well, one of the relationships that we have is with DILDT, or through KCL, we can establish a relationship between DILDT and the voltage cross is one of the 
um, equations at the end of the chapter um, relate CILDT with the, the um, using KCL with the uh, voltage across the inductor. So, and it, the B2 won't go away. So we it gives us an equation that is solvable with all the conditions that we can solve for. So we take the derivative of this entire thing with respect to T gives us DIL dt. This is a constant. It's just going to go away. Beta 2 prime is just a coefficient. Now we need to do the product rule for these guys in here. So you fix ABT and then you take the derivative of what's a sine and that gives me 60 cosine 60t plus over here now you fix sine, sine 60t times the derivative of e. So that's going to give me 80, 80 times e to the minus 80t. And that's the, let me double check my math because I make a lot of mistakes. Okay, so now, okay. Okay, great. So, let me see, what did I do from here? Oh, okay, so now I'm going to use the same trick that I used before. Um, this is just a function, right? And I can eval evaluate this function at any number I want. And I'm going to simplify this and evaluate it at zero. Very conveniently for me, the um, cosine is 31 and sine goes away. So I'm left with beta 2 prime is equal to 60 beta 2 prime. This is zero, this is one, this is one, is equal to whatever the value of di, um, of the, of di dt, dil dt is at zero, right? Well, um, dil dt at zero is, um, we know that il of t, right? To find DIL DT at zero, at um, zero, you want to say, well, IL of T is equal to 30 at time zero. IL of T is equal to um, 30 milliamps at time zero. And we have the nice relationship where we know that um, VL, VL um, is equal to LD on DT. Okay, and that's one of the formulas at the end of one of the chapters. And um, so, DIVT then is going to be VL over VL over L. Okay, so well, we know the voltage across the capacitor at time zero, right? At time zero, we have the inductors are short. And when the inductor is a short circuit, the drop voltage drop across that inductor is zero. So at time zero, the voltage drop across the inductor is zero. So DIDT then is equal to zero. And if DIDT is equal to zero, then the voltage drop across um, then B2, B2 then must be zero. And the other way you can look at it is to remember that current across the inductor cannot change. Um, it can't change instantaneously. And this is the alternative way. This is a mathematical way of looking at it, but the, um, the other way of looking at this equation is to know that the inductor can change, um, the inductor can change voltage instantaneously, but it can't change current instantaneously. So the rate of change right after the switching happens has to be zero. So therefore, B2 has to be zero. So, this tells me that B2 is zero. So this term goes away. So then I have IL of T is equal to 30 milliamps. Okay? This is going to prove that DI DT this just tells me that in the long run, so basically in the long run after the switch is closed for a long time, then the current is just going to be the loop because we have the, the current across the inductor is just a loop. So, um, 
So since it's just a loop, then we have V sub um, the uh, the voltage on the capacitor or the inductor then is zero, right? And since the voltage across the inductor is zero, then the um, the voltage since they are parallel connected, the voltage across the uh, capacitor is also zero. So the answer to this problem is that voltage across the capacitor V naught is zero. So when the switching happens, um, the current immediately goes to a steady state and it just turns into a loop and the voltage uh, drop across the capacitor is uh, immediately zeroed out. So, and that is the answer to this problem.